All right, welcome. Okay, welcome. Excuse me. Try to get the meeting started. Call the order, please. And I'm bringing good news, too. She's just excited. She's got good news. Okay, uh, call to order the um, September 29th um, Ontario Water and Sanitary District <coughs> meeting. Um, roll, roll call, please. Director Slater Carter. Present. Director Boyd. Here. Director Harvey. Here. Director Wilson. Here. Director Huber. Here. All right, there's no president statements. We have an oral comment from. Um, from somebody? Chris Porter. Chris Porter. Why don't you stand up here and identify yourself so that in case we don't know who you are. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a tall person here. Good evening, board members. My name is Chris Porter. I am the general manager for Ecology of the Coast. And I am here to report that we will be submitting our yearly rate application to the district that will begin January 1, 2017. And this year there will be a rate reduction of 3.56%. So for the majority of customers that, usual, that have a 20 gallon cart your rate will be reduced by 85 cents a month. If you have a 32 gallon cart, your rate will be reduced by a dollar for a month. So the um, rate reduction was able to come about because of a new contract that I negotiated with Ox Mountain at a reduced landfill tipping fee. Also, the fuel costs have gone down somewhat. Um, and different route applications that we have done to try to streamline the routes and save all over. So that is good news. I'm hoping for all our mutual customers. Um, also, Clemens and I have been meeting and discussing the quarterly pickups. And we've come to the decision that uh, Recology of the Coast will begin to collect the computer waste on our own. Starting at the next pickup, we received a letter from Straw. The next quarterly pickup. Correct. From uh, Straw Flower Electronics that said that they would need to raise the fee from $200 an event to $350 an event. And we feel that we're able to um, do that handling at a cheaper rate. So that will happen. We've, we've sent out written notification. That will happen at the next event. Just a um, question that's independent of all this. Have you ever thought about doing a um, shredding session at any time? We just had one here. Did you? Yes. Well, I certainly was out to lunch on that one. <laughs> we had one. It was it was sent out in the I'm sure in the was, newsletter but... that okay. the special newsletter. We had one um, was last month. Yes, last, last month. month. Well, so much for me reading newsletters. Okay. So, that's... so when might we do one of those again? <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll probably do another one towards the beginning of the year. Okay. Okay. I I have another small request. I, I remember reading about it on next door last year. Uh, the college you decided that you couldn't put pumpkins in the yard waste um, since they're in the yard, not as food but as decor. If we had composting here, we could, but because we don't, we can't. Because it's yard waste. Because the fee that we put we pay at Ox Mountain uh, is strictly for green waste. So waste. if you start to move, not not pumpkin waste, <laughs> just green waste. So anytime food is entered into that stream, it goes into a completely different classification. So green apples might work, but red apples are no apples. no apples. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, Chris, I think. 
if I recall the last time that uh, recycled uh, revenue uh, was significantly down. Is that still the case? Overall, Recology of the Coast lost $190,000 budgeted dollars this fiscal year. Our fiscal year go, um, ends tomorrow. <clears throat> so I was just doing research for my projections for next year. So overall, Pacifica through Miramar, we lost 190,000 budgeted dollars. And that's from loss of revenues yes. or recycled? Yes. So we should let the guys steal it then? Well, <laughs> nobody's stealing it right now. If you notice, no one's, no one's taking it right now, not even cardboard. No one's taking anything because there's absolutely no market. And our projections are that things will start to improve um, there is um, a large box, I don't know how many of you have been to the recycling yard, but there's a large box that we have there for big metal goods. Um, I was having to pay them to take it away. So within the last 60 days, I'm kind of breaking even. Some loads I have to pay for, some loads I'm getting paid for, so it's kind of breaking even. but. Um, Recology's projections are things will improve this coming fiscal year, but not to the extent that they were two years ago. Uh, uh, Chris, thank you very much for, for that, and thank you for, for, for doing that uh, for us, for that reduced rates. I want to make a comment that uh, when you go to the uh, recycling yard on Palmetto, um, you know, the guys there are really are really helpful. They're really nice. And they help you. Um, my, my wife goes there. And Kathy goes there, and uh, and, and they're, they're really really nice guys. Uh, girls, I think they're guys. But anyway, people. People. But so yeah, I want to. Thank you very thank much. You. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's right. Thank you. Yes. Well, that's that's good news about the reduction, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for working hard to get it. Thank yeah. you for staying on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> that too. All right, uh, we're going to go on to consent agenda. We have eight mm -hmm. items. Uh, one, approved minutes for special meeting on August 4th, 2016, and minutes for regular scheduled meeting on August 4th, 2016. Two, approved financial statements for August 2016. Three, approved warrants for October 1st, 2016. Four, SAM, Sioux Authority Midco side flow report for August 2016. Five, monthly review of current investment portfolio. Six, connection permit applications received. Seven, monthly water production report for August 2016. And eight, rain report. Items nine and 10 are on the following page. Okay, thank you, Clements. Nine and 10, nine, solar energy report and 10 monthly public agency retirement service report for July 2016. Okay, any board members? I don't want to pull it, I just want to make reference to the, uh, what I'll talk about later in the SAM report, but the flow report shows an interesting anomaly, so we can talk about that later. Okay. The, the uh, yeah, two things. One is uh, the uh, issue with the cockerels. Is there any other developments on that at this time? Um, unfortunately, not really many developments. I, I'm in close contact with the cockerels, um, and uh, we we're jointly trying to get the insurances um, to do what they need to do. Uh, so we're seeing a little progress. The insurances are now talking to each other. It's how far as we got. Okay. Okay. All right. And then Scott, you're going to talk about the uh, uh, the sewer report um, later during the during reports. Okay. I just wanted to call out since you might have that somewhere nearby on your screen. The you know the flow report. There's a it's a weird dip down in the big spike for Half Moon Bay uh, in the last couple of readings. So I'll be happy to have a glance at it now and we'll talk about it in a bit. Okay. Any any, any other board members? I so move. Okay, a second? Second. Okay, um, all those in favor of, uh, of approving the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Okay, 
So it passes. All right, we'll go on to um, old business, which there is, is, is none. So we'll move on to new business. Yeah, and, uh, four items. First one is review and possible action concerning adoption of appropriations limit for the year 2016-2017. So this is this is standard procedure for us. Um, we're asking the board to review um, and then adopt a resolution that sets the appropriations limit <coughs> for the fiscal year 2016-17. Um, and this is simply something that the state requires us to do. Um, it essentially places a limit on the amount of proceeds of taxes that state and local agencies can appropriate and spend each year. We are uh, way below the, the, the limit, so um, we're asking to adopt the resolution of the Montero Water and Sanitary District determining the 2016-17 appropriation limit. Uh, maybe one comment to that still, and that is we're required to um, notice uh, that this is an agenda item, and we did that, so we published this twice in the half moon bay review. All right. So moves. I'll second. Any other comments? Okay, can we do a roll call, please? Director Slater Carter. Aye. Director Boyd. Aye. Director Harvey. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Huber. Aye. All right, going on to the second um, item of new business review update on 4th Street Water Main Replacement Project. So the project is in its last phases. Uh, actually, tomorrow we are, the, 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 all services are already switched over to the new main. So the new main is. Uh, in service and is providing the water to um, the folks on the two blocks of 4th Street that receive the new main. Uh, tomorrow we are actually going to uh, abandon the old main uh, and um, with that it's so we're almost complete. There is of course a lot of follow-up work. It's still pretty bumpy out there so we're getting into the uh, paving of, of 4th Street now, but the actual water work is almost completed. Uh, then um, uh, there are some other w items that we actually had included in the 4th Street project that aren't 4th Street related. Um, certain valves throughout the system, uh, some of those have also been already installed and um, I know one is still missing, so the project still <coughs> continues, but on 4th Street we're actually pretty far along. Um, also, what we are, um, uh, just so everybody understands this, we, we are, um, our sewer project actually um, has, is not complete, is not, well, our sewer contractor essentially left and um, finished. Um, we, however, still had some change orders that we asked them to do. Uh, they simply aren't here anymore, so we are actually now asking Stolowski and Gonzalez to do some of the change orders that the other contractor would have done on the sewer side. Um, so you, you, you might see then that there are change orders that are actually sewer related. For example, we had an emergency <coughs> repair yesterday. Uh, the distillery pump station uh, was a failure and um, Stolaska Gonzalez is mobilized, so it was a very easy thing. It was not an emergency. We were able to get a, a, a quote for the change order, and they proceeded with that. Um, yeah, I think that concludes the update, so I'm very pleased to, uh, to see a new main, and um, we're all awaiting and seeing and seeing if that wet spot on 4th Street disappears tomorrow after we turn off that old main. Or the, the, the wet spot where the hydrangeas are? Uh, it's in, it's, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a, it's in a driveway around the valve box. We've dug it up many times, have mm -hmm. never found a leak. We're never able to chase it back. Um, we insist it's groundwater. We'll find out tomorrow. Gosh, that, gosh if, you, if you fix it, if you get rid of that leak, the hydrangeas might not be. You don't have to it. It's, it's, it's right next. It's not a leak. It's groundwater. But it's groundwater. We'll find out yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not been an environmental impact statement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I bumped into one of the crew this morning um, at the coffee shop. And um, <clears throat> he was so excited about the valve in place 
Um, At the Alta Vista? Well, the, the, he said that somebody had installed a valve using a valve in place technique on, on a pressurized line and he was just so excited by how, how well it worked. Yeah, it, it was actually a very important valve. Um, this was at the trunk line coming down from the tank. Uh, there was, it, we have, we had in the past difficulties isolating the tank. Isolating the tank would mean pressurizing the system through other means that are more complicated, very uh, operationally complicated. And this, the addition of these valves allows us to um, isolate the tank and certain sections of mains much easier and pressurize the system differently in case of an emergency. And it's done by not shutting down the main. It's actually, it just kind of dropped into the hot main, yes. Yeah, it was very exciting. You kind of clamp it around, cut it out. Yes. Drop the, the valve right into place, you bolt it into place and you're done. Yes. Uh, that sounds... Yeah, very, very interesting te yeah. technology, yes. Works so well. I, it's, it was fun to see a crew member excited about the work. Yeah, yes. It's pretty neat. Yeah, we, you know, we, it would have been very complicated to shut that section down. Uh, yeah. down and um, so that technology we've been using many times in the past already for yeah. similar situations. Yeah. I think Clements, the, the old main on 4th Street, that, that, that's made out of a steel. Yes. Steel. So, yes. so that, that, that just stays there. And, yes. uh, and, uh, and, and how, how close is the, is the new main to the old, old main? Uh, very close. Very close. Um, yeah. About two feet apart or so. Okay. okay. So, so there's been no problem in just letting it uh, be, no. be buried. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. Thank you, Clemens. All right, going on to item number three of new business, review of in-pipe power generation, potential use of new technology. Clemens. Yeah, so this is, this is actually um, essentially importing from a very interesting meeting uh, that, that we had here at the district. We've been um, observing since quite some time a, a technology that allows to harvest energy um, from water pipes. Uh, we have also at the system pressure, what's called pressure regulating uh, stations that essentially reduce pressure. Uh, so we have high pressure zones and the pressure regulating station is, is lowering that pressure down so that we don't have excess pressure in other zones. Um, and um, this, yeah, I think many people had the idea of essentially hanging a turbine into the pipe and putting a motor on top and harvesting that energy and it sounds very simple um, there there is a company that has experience with um, this with they, that developed a product that allows this for very large pipelines um, so 40 inch and diameter and larger and uh, the um, founder of this company actually now sold it off and is starting a smaller company that is focusing <coughs> on smaller pipelines. Um, not many people have 40 inch uh, pipelines, or not many districts. Uh, most districts have you know, 10, 12 inch lines that um, are, are, you know, are burning a lot of energy. And we actually have two specific sites where we think this would be um, very beneficial. Uh, where we're um, constantly reducing pressure, a lot of volume, a lot of water is going through there, and um, where we think this could be applicable. So we're working with the manufacturer trying to find out if this is really something that could work for us. And uh, if that would be the case, we definitely would um, stay on top of this and would, would let the board know and, and keep you in the loop. But uh, this is, um, again, it's a very interesting technology and um, actually quite a bit of energy that can be harvested. So um, I, I, I believe around, a, so a, a, a 24 inch pipe, which is now the largest of the smaller one, um, has has the potential of you know power powering about 15 homes or so, so it's uh, definitely something to consider. 
And that would be used for, for, our, 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 for, for our pumps, the district pump, pumping? Um, uh, that's part, the, the idea behind this is to use it for pumps on site. In California, unfortunately, you can't s simply sell the energy, the produced energy to PG&E, mm -hmm. uh, or you can, but you're getting a very low rate. Uh, so the real benefit is if you have energy use on a site to utilize this technology for the energy that you use on site. You're now, saying the best return is to use it directly rather than to buy the PG&E and or, or mm -hmm. try and sell it to PG&E. That's, unfortunately, that's where our sites are not so favorable, and that means just that we have to get a little more creative and figure out other solutions, and we have some ideas in that regard as well. So maybe there are some energy uses that we can actually, um, or that the energy can go to uses on these sites that aren't related to us, but we can still benefit from it. Okay. So it's in, in the early stages, but I think it's something very interesting. And we hope to see the board support if this would move, move forward. Well, well, Clemens, thank you very much for, 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 bring, for uh, pursuing this. And, uh, and uh, the staff involved, all of them, they also. So thank you for uh, your efforts. And we're, we're looking forward to hearing more about it. Uh, other board members? No, I want to congratulate, uh, yes, I want to congratulate Clemens on um, um, seeking ways to make this dinner, this district um, reduce costs and more energy efficient. I was at uh, Jerry Hill's coffee the other morning and there was a fellow talking about um, the importance of solar energy and I pointed out that we have three solar energy installations. Three. Mm -hmm. And um, he was quite surprised because we're, as usual, far ahead of the curve on this. So, um, I hope I hope that we can find ways to keep doing this. So I, I'm excited by this. Great. That's that's exactly what we want to hear. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Great. Any other comments? You know, we uh, I, I I received a I received a comment from uh, somebody about the, um, having the meetings go too fast, and so we're we're in danger today of to this evening of, of having a, uh, a super quick. Oh, meeting. I can fix that. So so we want yeah, so well, so the, so. Uh, so no comment on that. Did they increase that much? It's the yeah. power of chocolate. <laughs> so uh, so we, we so we we do have one more new item, uh, a new yes. business item. Uh, so that's number four, review and possible action concerning cancellation of next regular scheduled meetings, October 6th and October 20th, 2016. So at this time, we don't have any urgent items that require holding the October 6th meeting, or we don't know any, if any uh, that requires holding the October 20th. Uh, we do know that at least one director isn't here in October. Um, so the suggestion is, as usual, to um, let everybody know that we're thinking about canceling those. If something urgent arises, uh, then we will probably have, uh, Jim and I will, the President and I will have this discussion and, and uh, if needed, we will hold the meetings, but right now it looks like we don't need the meetings in October. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, all right, any, any, any other comments, anything else? Okay, with that we'll go on to uh, reports. So uh, Scott, uh, you want to go ahead on those flows sure. or Sam? Well, the, the key point on that is that uh, <laughs> from time to time we, uh, one agency or another notices that something about the flows is weird and we've all been trained into keeping an eye on our own. And Captain Bay raised the issue at our meeting on Monday. That, uh, <coughs> their number spiked to something really unusually large, and I think we all agree it's something that we need Sam's staff to investigate. Maybe maybe it's because we corrected Granadas and Lanteras, and theirs is finally correct. Well, if the investigation completes and, and they find that that's what happens, that, that's fine, but it would be historically highly irregular that this reading, uh, this reading is such an outlier that I have no reason to think it's uh, true. a good reading. Yeah. Um, so, 
Yeah, you know, just just a, a side note. Uh, so I, I looked actually at the lines and the graph, and, and the graph actually doesn't necessarily show what the numbers on top say. I mean, you so it may just be it may just be a clarifier. Yeah. So I don't want you to it. Just wanted to let you know. And one good piece of news about it is that some of these anomalies have taken a while to notice because they've been subtle. One benefit of this one is it's not solid, so we notice it early. Um, in other other sand business, um, so we some very good news. We've got the MOU worked out with the union. I think the uh, the work that our general manager and our our uh, uh, labor consultant uh, really did a good job of hammering out quite a few details. It seems to have been some give-give and some win-win all around. Uh, and to, to arrive at a point where <laughs> where both sides are, are willing to sign it, it's a, it's a good thing to get done. So that was a, a good piece of work. And um, I, <coughs> we'll be bringing that back uh, to prove that in writing. We spent so much time on it in the closed session. Did we come out and approve it in open session, or are we doing that in the next meeting? Or was this uh, under the... No, we did approve it. Right. And it is done under the manager's authority, because we gave yes. the manager uh, guidance, and they were able to negotiate something within that guidance. So um, get, get, getting one of those done is... These things can really drag on for a long time, and we have in the past seen that, and this one was just done very well, they had something like a dozen meetings, and uh, we could tell at every subsequent report that they were making good progress and it was collaborative. And, and so I think the this board and, and the SAM board um, both want to thank the SAM employees mm -hmm. for their um, um, working to find it in a collaborative effort. Um, <coughs> There are, I have seen other issues, not at Zen, not here, but where um, people can just go in with a bad attitude. And I think, in, in fact, uh, the Zen manager and our labor advisor and the boards and the Sam employees are all working for what's best for the community. And I, I think um, we're all very grateful for that. So in other business at SAM, we uh, we discussed the recycled water issue um, at, the, at the most recent uh, City of Happen Bay Council meeting. Uh, the council voted uh, essentially to approve half of the amount that uh, we had all been discussing. And uh, it was very positive. I mean, they were saying and doing a lot of the right things, but the money came out to half of what we need to hit that $180,000 to uh, to pay for the completion of the 25% design work that CCWD needed. <coughs> it's a little complicated when you got five parties involved, but back in February, CCWD had, had asked that we go ahead and dial in that certainty to 25% you know, to the 25 design. Uh, most of us were ready to go, but they're an important partner in this, and it was only $180,000, so we came back here, and Montero agreed. Uh, if our partners put up their part, then we put up our part. And then Granada followed suit pretty quickly, and then Half Moon Bay came back with lots of questions, and then came back with some more questions, and then came back with some more questions, and then uh, last week came back and voted for two of the five tasks, totaling about half of the amount of the question. Um, all things considered, that was tremendous progress, and we were very happy with that, and Catherine and I went to the city council meeting to tell them how excited we were that they were uh, expressing this um, uh, very deliberate desire to move forward. But we talked at the meeting um, Monday night, and uh, I let them know. I mean, we all had some things to say. It was very polite and pleasant, but um, Catherine expressed some concerns, I expressed some concerns, like we got to come back to our board because our approval was contingent on them doing the 90,000, not 45,000. Um, and 
Granada and we were like, you know, is this going to be a, a three agency project or does it need to be a two agency project? Honestly, we've got a we've got a customer who's ready to underwrite the entire amount. So this is not going to be hard to fund. It's not going to be hard to to guarantee and contract. And the two agencies have done some expensive projects together, you know, without Half Moon Bay. And Half Moon Bay called a recess and uh, talked about it for a little bit. And they came back and they said, you know, we're going to go back to council and we're going to ask for the full amount. We're going to try to make this simple instead of having to go figure out a plan B or you know, some other kind of contingent funding. So, this is good. We've got, um, I think everybody at the table at the SAM board now is pretty much on the same page of what the next steps are. Um, they've got clarity and uh, determination to go back and, and talk to their council and get it. I think they will. Um, and while it's cost us nearly a year because of people wanting greater certainty about a project, um, this is a move forward. So, and compared to the, the previous 10 years, this is a big move forward, so. I, uh, the, on the city council meeting, they said they would go for half of it, then they voted a second time to do the whole thing? No, they didn't vote a second time. So what happened <clears throat> Monday night at the SAM meeting, um, Debbie Ruddock and Deborah Penrose to the city council members here. So I'm mostly explaining for the camera audience okay. if we have any. Um, the two city council members who sit on the sewer authority okay. um, had, had a good discussion about it after having discussed it with the full board and then came back and said, you know, we feel pretty motivated to go back and see if we can't get the whole amount. So they're going to go back at their, at their next available city council meeting to try to get the, the full amount. Which is great because the article in the Half Moon Bay Review um, said such wonderful things about how we're all working to, yeah, to move the forward how, together. Yeah, so, it sounded like yeah. everything was right up to snuff there. Um, they, they forgot a few parts, like... Like they didn't fund it. <laughs> and like they didn't fund it adequately. They didn't put any, in any money for Sam's involvement in the project, for the Sam staff. For uh, the project management. And none for the project management. Just details. Well, I, it. it's, you know, at the previous meeting and the meeting before that, um, many of us were very concerned about whether or not uh, they'd be moving the goalposts again and opening it up to more questions. And that's not what happened now. So now we seem to actually be converging on the solution. So, so I guess uh, so assuming the next city council does what they said they'll do, we're good. <laughs> we're, we remain optimistic and want to Right now, I think uh, our colleagues at SAM are acting in a way that um, uh, looks very much like we're going to be able to work together in this time. Um, let's see. Um, we had an item about uh, possibly recruiting a full-time accounting technician, and we pushed back for some more information on that and have not acted to approve that yet. Um, yeah, those were the, the major items. All right, Th thank you, Scott. Uh, and Catherine, uh, Mid Coast Community Council, Catherine. The thing that is on the agenda <coughs> right now for the Mid Coast Council is doing uh, candidate, candidate Q&As. They're, they're structured in such a way they're not really debates. Um, so, Go to the MCC, there are special meetings going on. Uh, go to the MCC website and look for your um, uh, uh, race of, of interest. And uh, it will not include the Pest Moon Bay City Council. You'll have to go, I think, to the Chamber of Commerce if you have that idle curiosity. But um, since you can't vote for that one. Um, but it, the uh, last night was the Harbor District. Uh, next week are the is the uh, Montero Water and Sanitary District and MCC. and the M Coast Community Council. Um, so those are well worth your time to watch. 
Um, oh, and Jim, if you would do me a favor and put up the screen, I want to show folks what's on the back. It's <coughs> of interest in the show's council. Um, uh, Clemens and I put a sticky. Oh, sorry. Take a, take a one just fell down. Um, on each of the sites on the original subdivision map uh, for parks and or recreation that were included in the subdivision map. In some places there are 20 acres. There are now four or five acre parcels of houses there. Um, in community gardens, that, um, that's ownership has been changed to open space, which is good. But you can see, you can see, um, if you look, how many haven't been done. Um, and I found that I found that to be very interesting. How well done the planning for this community was, and how um, unfortunately it hasn't been implemented for the population we have now. So, because we have no local parks. We have state parks, regional parks, and federal lands, but, but nothing local. So, that, I, that, and that's an issue that the Mid-Coast Council is dealing with and will be dealing with, and will probably be an issue, too, if you go to the um, Q&A on Wednesday night, uh, or, yeah, on, on the 4th, and ask folks, um, the Mid-Coast Community Council, candidates what their thoughts on local parks are. All right, thank you, Catherine. Um, okay, so we're going to uh, move on to um, CSDA report, Catherine. Nothing to report. All right. And CCWD and CCWD committee report. Bill, do we have any report? <laughs> Jim, do we have any report? Okay. I've been kind of repeat for months. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, attorney's report. Dave? Another report. Another report. <clears throat> uh, any directors <clears throat> have a report? No? General manager. Report. Yes. I um, have two things. Uh, first one, um, we actually have today an event that we luckily didn't have since a long time, a large water main break. Um, and um, I want to take this opportunity to thank our staff. Um, it was um, impressive to see them in action. Um, it, it took us 10 minutes from the first report to start shutting down. And. Uh, uh, again, it's something that we've seen in the past many, many times, but our, our young crew luckily so far didn't have to um, go through many of these exercises. And um, so uh, I have to say everything went very well and uh, definitely shut it off very quickly. So um, they've done a great job. Who was the break? Uh, on 8th in Maine. Ooh. Um, so a a eighth and Eighth Street and Main Street. So Main between Street. between okay. a between Main and Farallon, okay. that block. Uh, well, if I could interject, it's an example of why the grand jury was wrong. That the crew had had to come from Half Moon Bay. Our tanks. I mean, that would have been a lot of water. Yes. I mean, you can't wait an hour, and you're you're losing you know, probably a thousand gallons a minute. So an hour's quite a bit there. Yeah. So um, okay. uh, the second item was uh, I attended today a, um, a discussion panel um, informationary session at the uh, water reuse in Northern California about uh, direct potable uh, reuse of water. Um, and uh, this, this, is, this is in the context of that there is a framework actually being developed right now, so the, the state is um, working with uh, stakeholders to develop a framework on how to achieve direct potable reuse. And uh, it was very interesting. I have to say the state is doing a very good job. There are, um, it's a, it's, it was a very technical session and it's amazing how many complications there are. Uh, it uh, seems very straightforward, but is everything but straightforward. 
um, uh, for, for example, the idea of simply putting a um, plant and, and, and um, or, or e reducing everything from, uh, so the wastewater side and what, what we, let me start over again. What we, what we currently see in some places is uh, indirect potable re reuse, which is essentially a um, wastewater treatment plant or, I mean, it's bringing up to tertiary standards. Then we see an, an environmental barrier, which means it's going into an aquifer. And then we see this being treated through a, through a water treatment plant, again, pumped and then treated one more time. And, and reducing this down to um, one treatment plant is something that the state is actually pushing back very hard on. And um, so there, there is a lot of insistence on uh, an environmental barrier, even though it's not direct, uh, indirect use. You know, something like shorter than four months is what they're recommending, for example, uh, in retention time in, in the environmental barrier, if this is not a lake or surface water holding <coughs> tank, for example. So there is, um, it is complicated. There are some. Um, we, we all have, are aware of the uh, 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 constituents of emerging concern. Uh, there are definitely some new ones. For example, the um, antibiotic resistant bacteria and the genetic material that's associated with them. So it, it is actually getting fairly complicated. Um, I have to say, there is great pressure in this drought to get to direct potable reuse and the state is working hard to achieve that with everyone um, but um, the, the impression that I have is that this framework uh, will be very complicated uh, and it is going to take some time until this is allowed in California and the state is I think doing a very good job in looking at this very closely right now. Okay. Thank you, Clemens. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, we're going to, uh, if there's been nothing further, we're going to recess and go into a uh, uh, convene back in closed session, public employee evaluation, government code 54957. Thank you very much. <laughs>